Hey fam, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing my very, very first tag video. And this is the eyeshadow palette tag created by Samantha March and Allie Glines. It was inspired by the TikTok. It was inspired by the TikTok trend of like prompting folks to show your this type of eyeshadow palette or this type of eyeshadow palette. And Samantha and Allie turned it into a tag. It's been a popular tag from what I've seen. Some of my absolute favorite creators have already done this tag. So I encourage you to check them out. And if y'all are interested in finding out which eyeshadow palettes in my collection would fit these prompts, go ahead and stay tuned. We're gonna get into it right now. So the first prompt of this tag is show your newest eyeshadow palette. And I actually have three. Truth be told, my absolute latest, latest palette, because I got here yesterday, is the Menagerie Pastel Pup Palette. I have this on my eyes today for the most part with like a little bit of help from two other palettes. This is the Pastel Pup Palette. I actually used Aquatic in my crease, Ice Cap in the outer corner, and then Snowball for the most part in the center of my lid. I noticed that this shimmer shade lacked a bit of base pigment, so I was really packing it on my lid. In order to get better opacity, I actually reached into this little magnetic palette. And this is my collection of Davina shades, four different bundles, and I tapped into this little guy here in the center, which is Nerds which comes from the Exploders collection, the Willy Wonka Exploders collection. So I just kind of like tap that gently over top some of the little like patchiness from the uh, shimmer shade in the pastel pup palette just to kind of like fill in some of the gaps. And then on my lower lash line, I used Ice Worm. And then I wanted like a mint shimmer to go over. I didn't see any of my Davina palette. I didn't see any in the pastel pup palette. So I reached into my little Nomad palette and I grabbed some of Moshi Moshi and just drag that a little bit under my lower lash line on top of that mint color, the Ice Worm shade from the Pastel Pop. And I really like this eye look. I think it's really fun. This is absolutely the latest palette that I've received. And so far, I really love it. Love it, love it. But two contenders for my latest palette because they came, one came this week and one came like the end of last week, I believe. The Hasina 2 palette from Blush Tribe. They are essentially closing their doors and I wanted to grab this before I couldn't any longer. I think this color story is really beautiful and very unique to my collection. I don't think I have a lot of these greens. So I just thought this was really beautiful and I wanted a chance to try Blush Tribe while I still could. And the other palette that I just got was the Something Gorgeous palette from Love Lux Beauty. This palette took my breath away the first time I saw it. I've only swatched this, I haven't gotten a chance to play with it yet, but I think this is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I've been in a bit of a love affair with indie brands. Just stuff I haven't really tried before and discovering all these smaller creators. And I just, I don't know, it's been really fun. The next prompt in this tag is to show the oldest palette in your collection. And I think this one might surprise some of you or most of you, or maybe even all of you. Oldest eyeshadow palettes in my collection are these three. I got them all on the exact same day. I ordered them Black Friday of 2018. This is what started my obsession with YouTube, with makeup and with my collection. So the first is the KKW Beauty Classic Palette. And this has been a favorite work palette for me. It's not one I reach for all, all the time, just because it's a little bit more basic, but these really are great quick looks. I really like Kim's shadow formula. And then from Kylie, I got the Take Me On Vacation palette and I got the Sipping Pretty palette. The Take Me On Vacation palette, I do wanna get a little bit more use out of because I've, I've tried it in the past with hit and miss results. When I have tried it in the past, I found the shadows a little patchy and difficult to blend, but Kylie's Sipping Pretty palette, which is extremely expensive. It's like 60 something dollars. I again got it on Black Friday, so it was like 40 bucks or something. The formula in this palette I think is so much better. I've really enjoyed playing with this and using it. These aren't ones I reach for all, all the time, but I have absolutely reached for this several times. You can see my pans are kind of filthy <laughs> and uh, I really do like this palette. So it's just crazy. It's crazy to think of where it all began. The next prompt is to show your most expensive palette. And I also have multiple palettes for this one for a variety of reasons. And I sort of blame Allie for this because she brought up such a good point in her video. Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath are both around the same price point. And while Natasha Denona's full size palettes might be $4 more than Pat McGrath's full size palettes, Natasha Denona will typically have like five or six more shades than Pat McGrath's full size palettes. So it's kind of like, really when it breaks down to it, which is more expensive. And I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the right answer to that question is. So I'm just gonna show you all four. The first, I have two Pat McGrath palettes. I have the Mothership 1 and the Mothership 5. And these could be my most expensive palettes because they do retail for $125 each. This is the Mothership 1 palette. 
And this is the Mothership 5 palette. Now I did pick up both of these palettes on sale. Pat had a spring sale on her site. And if you spent, I think under $150, you got 20% off. But if you spent over $150, you got 25% off. And so I rationalized, I'm like, I can get both of these palettes for under $100 if I buy them at the same time. Whereas if I only bought one or the other, it, I wouldn't get as much of a discount. And these are palettes I've wanted for at least a year. Like I've been looking at these palettes, maybe not a year for both, I but I think around there, I think it's been about a year I've wanted these. So these are absolutely beautiful, but I did get them on sale. So I'm like, are they my most expensive? And then the Sunset palette I also got on sale. I believe I got this for $100 from Sephora when Natasha Denona had a sale. This is the Sunset palette. So this one is a $129 palette, but again, I got this one on sale. So I'm like, like, which is more expensive? Like, did I spend, you know, I, I technically spent more money on this single palette than I spent on either of these single palettes when it all kind of breaks down with the sale. And then I consider my Natasha Denona gold palette. I'm like, this one was not purchased on sale. This was full price. So is this the most expensive? But then this was a gift. So I didn't personally spend anything. Doug spent $129 on this palette plus tax. So y'all be the judge. I don't know what counts as my most expensive because there are variables to consider, but those are my four most expensive palettes. Another prompt is to show your least expensive palette. And for me, that has to be my little e.l.f. four pan bite size eyeshadow in Acai U. This is only $3 for four shades. There are so many cute color stories, these little four pans. This is just the one that appealed to me the most. And I'm super happy that they have such an affordable option with great quality shadows. The next prompt is show us your everyday palette in your collection. And <laughs> again, I have two. <laughs> I couldn't decide because it really just depends on preferences. But they are both from Anastasia Beverly Hills and we have the Soft Glam palette and the Sultry palette. The reason I have both is I think these are both incredible everyday palettes. You've got a lot more warm and neutral tones in your Soft Glam palette. And then you've got more neutral slash cool tones in the Sultry palette. So depending on skin tones, undertones, preferences for warm or cool shadows. I think either one of these would be an incredible everyday palette. And I recommend them both highly. This one is discontinued now, but I heard you can still find this some places. Beauty Bay, I believe has this from what I heard. Definitely my recommendations for an everyday palette. The next prompt is to show the most colorful palette in your collection. And I think for me, it would have to be the Trendy in Tokyo palette from BH Cosmetics. I think this is probably my brightest, most colorful option in my whole collection. It's so pretty. I love the colors and how playful they are. I want to tap into this when it gets a little closer to summertime. Right now I'm still enjoying the whole pastel moment that we're getting to enjoy it for the spring. I think this is such a pretty palette. I love how bright it is and colorful and just happy. Very happy to have this. So the next prompt is to show the smallest eyeshadow palette in your collection. And I had a little bit of competition. I considered the e.l.f. but I wanted to use this one for my most affordable. I looked at my little NARS six pan, if you guys saw my shot, my stash for NARS a few weeks ago, and I have that little NARS palette, but actually I measured it against this next one, and it is literally the smallest one in my collection. And that is the Fenty Beauty Snap Shadow. Mine is the Cadet Color Story, it's the seven, seventh palette. And this little guy is teeny, teeny, tiny. Like, if we look at the e.l.f. pans, how much bigger they are than this palette. It's so cute, it's like, here's my hand, which is not that big. And here is this little tiny shadow. So it's just very cute and compact. And I think this is definitely the smallest eyeshadow palette in my collection. For the biggest eyeshadow palette in my collection, I would have to give that to the Morphe 39S Such a Gem palette. This guy's got 39 shades. He is gigantic. He is bigger than my head, like <laughs> by a long shot. And he's just enormous. So this would have to for sure be my biggest palette. My best memory palette was a tough one because my collection is relatively new. So I haven't gotten to make a ton of memories with my makeup yet, but there is a palette that stood out and, and stood out pretty quickly to me. And that is the Double Entendre palette from ColourPop. And the reason this palette holds special memories for me is because this is the palette I always bring traveling with me. Traveling is one of my favorite things literally ever. It's something that I see as a non-negotiable in my life. It's something I know I need. Like I need that chance to get away and refresh and see new sights and taste new foods and be new places. It's just, it's so integral to my happiness. 
And when I see this palette, I think about the trips I've taken to New York, to Florida, even overnights with my girlfriends. And it's a simple little palette. It's pretty basic, but I can count on this to give me easy wearable looks while I'm traveling when I don't want a lot of muss or fuss. These shadows perform, this palette's got my back and it's been my little my little co-pilot on my little traveling adventures and that always makes me really happy just even thinking about those times. For a palette that I think is worth the hype, I have to give it to Huda Beauty New Nudes. I bought this palette because it was getting so much hype and people loved it and I have to tell you I love it too. This is one that even though I've had it it's been in my collection since my channel was like six months old maybe younger than that. This is still a palette I reach for all the time even with over I have like well over 150 eyeshadow palettes. This is still one I reach for constantly. I just adore it. I think the colors are very flattering. It's easy to wear. It's easy to create looks. Pretty much any look you try with this palette, it, it's really beautiful and soft and easy. The shades are really pigmented and velvety. I find them very blendable. I love all the different textures and tones. I just, I love this palette. I've recommended it. I, I still love it, I still use it, and this would be my palette I think is worth the hype. For a palette I don't think is worth the hype, if you've been following me for some time, you may already know the answer to this question. There is one eyeshadow palette in my collection that I have practically gone to war with. I have, <laughs> I've not been the biggest fan of this, and I did recently find like a place for this in my collection and a more of a respect for it for what it's capable of and and how it could function in my life but i still don't think it's worth the hype i never have i think the formula is difficult i think you can get the same colors in other palettes that you don't have to mess with as much but the james charles palette i just don't I don't think it's worth the hype. Yes, I think for its time, I think the idea of pressed pigments, I hadn't heard much about pressed pigments before this palette, not that they weren't around, but that I don't think it was as widely talked about. I do like this palette in that it can create essentially the colors that you see in the pan. If you want a hot pink, I mean, it's the color you see in the pan. And I love that about this palette, however, a lot of eyeshadows are colorful and perform well and work like eyeshadows so that when you go to blend them it's the same techniques you're accustomed to with a palette like this you have to essentially learn new techniques in order to use these eyeshadow palettes if you are a makeup artist you already know these techniques but for the common person walking into ulta seeing this palette and saying yes i want those colors on my eyes it's not the easiest formula to use. It's not a beginner friendly, I don't think. And I think when you're marketing something to the masses, it really should be user friendly. With these shadows, essentially how you would best work with them, in my experience, is to pick some up on your brush, stamp it onto the spot where you'd like it, and then gently blend it. You may have to go back and dip in and play and go back and forth and back and forth. You'll get the colors that, that you're promised in the pans, which I do love. But like I said, there's so many eyeshadows right now that just work just blend where you don't have to know specific techniques to use them and you don't need the special care with those shadows the way that i think these shadows demand do you know what i mean so i just think this palette's overhyped and uh that's just my opinion the next prompt is to show a favorite eyeshadow palette from a favorite brand and for me a brand i have really just been a little obsessed with to be honest i'm, I'm a little sprung to me melt is just such a creative cool brand i just really have loved so many of their color stories and i love their whole vibe and from them this palette the muerte palette i think is the prettiest color story that they've ever come out with and i and dare to say that anyone's ever come out with in the history of makeup i think this is the most stunning palette i've ever seen in my life and it is by far my favorite palette from a favorite brand. And then the biggest shock of all may be my most used eyeshadow palette in my collection. Again, if you've been following me for a little bit, you may know the answer to this question from a previous video, but after all these fancy palettes, guess which one I use the most? Bay. The Desert Oasis palette from BH Cosmetics is probably my most reached for palette in my entire collection. I have dug into these bad boys. I mean, there's like a whole divot in this little highlighter and there's some divots and some other shadows. I find this palette so easy to work with, so beautiful. It's so great for work. 
back, you know, when I was going into the office, this was one that oftentimes if I was running late, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just need something I can trust. And I would just grab for this. This palette has never done me wrong. I don't use the um, highlighters as highlighters. I use them as additional shimmer eyeshadow shades and they are beautiful. BH Cosmetics does not play when it comes to their highlighter formula. It is so metallic and beautiful on the lid. These shades are your everyday kinds of shades. The shades when, you know, like I love the look I have on today. I love it. I think it's like so pretty. I don't wear blue that often, but this is like a blue I can get behind. But this type of stuff takes time, especially if you're not used to working with color. Certain colors will not work together in terms of color theory. And it's like, oh no, you know, like when you don't really have time to make mistakes, it's so nice to have a palette that you can depend on and trust that just performs well, that looks totally appropriate for work or whatever else you're doing. And I just love, 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 love my BH Cosmetics Desert Oasis palette. Just love it. So I hope this little eyeshadow palette tag was fun for y'all. It was certainly fun for me. It was fun to think of all these questions. And Samantha's invited us, if you're a creator, to make this tag too. And if you do, let me know. I would love, love, love to see what you have in your collection. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you so much to Samantha and Allie for creating this tag. Thank you to all the lovely creators who have already done this tag and have provided me such, such delight in watching their videos. Again, I thank you all for being here. I love you all so much. And until the next video, Bye.